Good morning, everyone. My name is Juliet Kaufman. I'm from Orion Innovations. I'm going to be speaking about the international business trip to South Africa, which was undertaken in March of this year, to look at the challenges and innovation needs associated with acid mine drainage. During this presentation, I will give a brief overview of the key messages that came out of that trip, but there is a great deal more information available in the accompanying report. So please do let us know if you'd like a copy. So the main objectives of the trip were to identify the niche areas where the market really needs innovative solutions, bearing in mind that there is already significant know-how within South Africa. Where there's a benefit in sourcing those solutions from international suppliers, including SMEs. And we also wanted to understand the political, regulatory, social, as well as technical drivers and barriers to the uptake of new technologies and to identify and map practical next steps for SMEs to communicate their ideas to end users and potential partners in South Africa. Our thanks go to DHI and South Africa for supporting us in setting up meetings with a range of stakeholders. CSIR is a highly regarded research institute active in AMD research. The DWA and DST government bodies gave us an overview of the AMD issue within South Africa and information on the role of the innovation support agencies in providing advice and funding. Oricon is the lead consultant on the current government-led feasibility study to find solutions to AMD in the East, Central and West Rand underground mining basins, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. Mintails and Anglo-American are both proactive mining companies currently trialling solutions to AMD. So just a bit of background to the way in which AMD is formed. Acid mine drainage refers to polluted water that arises when exposed areas of sulphide minerals, particularly pyrite, come into contact with oxygenated water. The pyrite becomes oxidised, producing sulfuric acid and iron-based compounds. As the water increases in acidity, aluminium and other heavy metals become more soluble. AMD is primarily associated with gold and coal mines and some platinum mines. Formation occurs either in abandoned mine voids where pumping has ceased and therefore water levels rise, or via rainwater seepage through backfill material or surface tailings dumps. You can see the figures on the slide here show the immense scale of the problem, and the cost of cleaning up the disused mines alone has been put at about 30 billion rand. That's about 2.5 billion euros. As you can see from the map, the situation is particularly acute in the gold mining areas of Gauteng and Free State, as well as the water-scarce coal mining regions of Limpopo and Mpumalanga. In fact, the Witwatersrand, or Wits for short, gold mining area that you can see on the dot in the centre of Gauteng province incorporates some of the most immediate and large-scale threats from AMD. So this slide shows the Witwatersrand gold fields, just to the south of Johannesburg, the area highlighted in yellow is the west, central and eastern Rand basins. Decant of AMD from the western basin began in 2002. But only in 2010, and under considerable pressure from the media, did the government initiate emergency measures to pump water out of the voids and neutralise it using high-density sludge treatment. This has now been achieved in the western basin and is, a planned, and is planned ahead of expected decant in the other two basins. Approximately 180 megalitres of water will need pumping out on a daily basis, making this the largest AMD problem in the world. But high density sludge treatment does not remove salts from the water, which therefore requires dilution within the Vaal River system. With increasing concerns over water shortage, it's understood that this is not sustainable beyond around 2015. The government has therefore also initiated a large-scale feasibility study to assess options for longer-term solutions, and tenders for treatment and waste disposal are expected in early 2014, and I'll give a few more details on that a bit later. So acid mine drainage can be tackled in a number of ways. First is the prediction of the likelihood and rate of AMD formation, requiring measurement and modelling of the geohydrological environment followed by the design of good water and waste management practices. Complete prevention of AMD is not realistic, 
but measures can be taken to reduce the ingress of water into areas of exposed pyrite, including diverting the flow of water and improving the isolation of tailings dumps. Treatment of polluted water is usually achieved in two stages, neutralisation to increase the pH and remove heavy metals, and then desalination to remove the remaining sulphates. A number of active desalination technologies are available, but all are currently extremely expensive, and only reverse osmosis, a type of physical desalination, has been used in South Africa at commercial scale. Passive treatments, such as settling ponds, use less energy and require less maintenance, but the resulting water quality is a bit variable, and the process is less suited to large quantities of water. Lastly, the treatment processes themselves produce large quantities of waste, and its, disposable, its disposal is one of the key challenges associated with AMD. The waste is usually in the form of sludge, which can be contaminated by heavy metals, and brine. In both cases, current disposal methods are inefficient and expensive. So just a few slides now to give you a feel of the nature and scale of the issue. This is a photo of an abandoned open cast gold mine in the West Rand Basin that has become filled with acid mine water. Just to the left of this basin is a small area of water. You can see it with the arrow in the picture. And this is the well where decant began about 10 years ago. Another photo from the same site shows Mintail's gold reprocessing plant. The company uses neutralised AMD as process water, and you can see the large clarifiers from the neutralisation process in the foreground. And lastly, this is waste sludge from the neutralisation process. It's a dark, gelatinous material which leaves orange, iron-rich deposits in its wake. So, having a look at the drivers and barriers now, in terms of drivers, of particular importance is increasing concerns over future water shortages. The use of river systems to dilute AMD neutralised water, as well as continuing pollution of ground and surface water resources, are therefore serious threats. This is reflected in a growing emphasis on more effective implementation of existing legislation, for example, through a forthcoming wastewater discharge charge, based on the polluter pays principle, and this has been cited as a key driver of change. The Vitz Basin crisis has also highlighted AMD as a threat to important economic areas, not least Joburg's own suburbs and tourist attractions. Pressure from environmental groups in the media has been effective and is being maintained. And as always, corporate social responsibility is of great importance to the mining sector. But there are also substantial barriers to market entry. Liability for abandoned mines is a key issue. Who should pay for the treatment of AMD, the public or private sector, or indeed both? AMD is somewhat of a political minefield, with different stakeholder groups holding opposing views on the best way forward. There is existing legislation for mine environmental management and closure planning, but this is the responsibility of the Department of Mineral Resources, which after all has a mandate for mineral exploitation, rather than the Department of Water Affairs, which has the mandate for water quality. And this can lead to a split between objectives and enforcement. AMD treatment is associated with high capital and operating costs, and new technologies are seen as high risk and unattractive to the generally conservative mining sector. And importantly, there are genuine competing needs for both innovation and finance within South Africa, not least, just as an, as an example, the provision of simple, effective domestic sewage treatment. South Africa itself conducts world-class R&D into AMD, Nevertheless, a number of potential opportunities of relevance to SMEs were identified for which both the public and private sectors are examining solutions from international suppliers. These are measuring and mapping the geohydrological environment, and it's widely acknowledged that there is a gap in the understanding of underground systems, particularly within the complex karst geology. Mine planning in particular considering AMD within the larger context of water management at catchment scale. Treatment of AMD remains an area of need, since, as I said, there are currently no economically sustainable desalination technologies at commercial scale. And waste reduction and disposal is an absolutely key issue. And lastly, in-stream remediation treats the pollution in situ once it has reached surface waters, and there's been very little activity in this area to date. 
These opportunities have been scored against three characteristics. Fit with SMEs re represents the extent to which SMEs will need to partner with other companies or larger contractors. The level of competition reflects the number of other players that currently have technology solutions and market attractiveness is a measure of the strength of drivers versus barriers. Taking waste products as an example, waste disposal technologies tend to be associated with large-scale high-cost equipment and solutions will therefore require partnerships with in-house water and waste management teams or their specialised engineering contractors. There appear to be no winning technologies at present and competition is therefore low, whereas market drivers, in particular in the form of improved economics from waste reduction or the extraction of valuable materials, are very strong indeed. But in order to engage with the AMD market, it is important to understand the principal stakeholders involved and their differing roles. Of particular importance to early and pilot stage technologies are the academic institutions and government innovation support agencies, which provide opportunities for collaboration on the ground, as well as advice on the AMD sector and potential funding support. Although eligibility for most funding requires a company to be based in South Africa, there appear to be opportunities to create public-private partnerships, for example via the Technology Innovation Agency, provided that there is sufficient provision for South Africa to share in the long-term benefits from the project. For later stage technologies, it's essential to interact with the local supply chain, such as component suppliers, and of course with end-user clients. These may be the government itself, mining houses or their tier one suppliers. As already stated, the mining sector is inherently conservative, but there are a few proactive companies who are interested in emerging and pilot scale technologies. Two of these are described in a little more detail in a few moments. Interaction with all these stakeholders will require investment in time on the ground in South Africa, developing good relationships and gathering additional market intelligence. Of course, all solutions need to be adapted to the South African environment. In addition to being cost competitive, that means, for example, being economically self-sustaining, in other words, not requiring long-term subsidy, and as you would expect, being robust enough to withstand the South African climate and terrain. One of our contacts pointed out that this means field equipment being able to withstand repeated lightning strikes. Skill shortages are an issue in South Africa, and simple operation and maintenance requirements are therefore essential. In view of soaring energy prices, energy efficiency is highly valued, as is the ability to buffer operations against an intermittent electricity supply. Technologies either need to be niche, and therefore addressing a very specific problem, or have broad applicability across a range of sectors. However, clients also value broader characteristics. Of particular importance for foreign-based firms is a business model that demonstrates opportunities for local wealth creation and knowledge and skills transfer. BBBEE, or Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment, refers to a set of codes, for example around ownership and skills development, that are intended to redress imbalances from the apartheid era. Compliance is not legally binding on private companies, but in practice, any activities that can promote the policy are seen as advantageous. So in addition to the more general innovation needs that I described earlier, three tangible and current opportunities were highlighted during the study. The first is pilot schemes for AMD treatment technologies in the Western Basin. The ongoing feasibility study, looking at long-term solutions in the Western, Central and Eastern Gold Basins, has recommended that opportunities are provided to build pilot scale plants, that's in the region of 5 to 10 megalitres a day, for emerging technologies. This is in order to ensure that optimal solutions can be deployed in future. And this could be really an exciting opportunity for SMEs to trial later stage but not yet proven technologies. A number of candidate technologies have already been identified, and indeed some of these consortia may be open to collaboration but there should still be opportunity for new entrants to participate. In addition to value for money and reliability, technologies that reduce the volume of waste streams and enable product recovery will be highly valued. Two proactive mining companies also took a specific interest in innovative technologies. Since 2007, there's been an increasing internal e emphasis on the importance of water 
to Anglo-America's cooperations. This culminated in 2010 with the creation of a new water manager's post for the entire global organisation. Having completed a target-led water strategy, their focus is now turning towards investment in technology. Specific AMD-related issues of importance to the company are listed here. In particular, solutions are valued which are associated with long-term economically viable markets for byproducts, have application across mine types, but are adapted to local conditions. For procurement and partnering purposes, specific routes are available at the company for technologies at different technology readiness levels. Now for proven technology, next for pilot scale technology, and new for concept to pilot. Mintails processes and recovers gold from both hard rock and surface tailings resource. The company is trialling an innovative neutralisation process in which iron in the AMD forms a relatively stable chemical complex with the cyanide contained in the gold recovery wastewater to produce more easily disposable waste. Mintails is a highly innovative company open and willing to offer their site and equipment to technology developers who wish to trial downstream processes, such as perhaps removal or recovery of uranium from gold slimes or sulphate removal following neutralisation of the AMD. The site is easily accessible, not far from Johannesburg. There's plenty of space to set up pilot equipment and parts of each of the two waste streams can easily be diverted and used for treatment and characterisation studies. So in conclusion, acid mine drainage was chosen because the issue is well known in South Africa and does not have clear technology solutions to date. What we found was that the drivers to identify innovative technologies are indeed strong and solutions are welcomed from international players. However, there are also significant barriers to addressing this market. In particular, the political controversy over liability for disused mines, the conservative nature of many end users and competing factors for finance and innovation. Nevertheless, if companies are able to demonstrate solutions that are clearly adapted to South African conditions, together with a business model that addresses local wealth creation and upskilling needs, this is a market that's worth approaching. It's suggested that these companies take the following action. Test initial, test initial ideas with two innovation support agencies, the Water Research Commission and the Technology Innovation Agency. Contact appropriate research institutes to investigate opportunities for collaboration on the ground and identify potential local supply chain partners. This can be followed by direct contact with end users, demonstrating a robust value proposition and appropriate business model. Thank you very much for listening. Please feel free to ask me any questions in a little while. Talk to one of the experts that went on the trip later today or contact one of us at another time.